rhizomes. We think of rhizomes as aggressive spreading roots, right? In truth, they're actually underground horizontal stems. Mm, stems. Sometimes rhizomes, these underground stems moving along under the surface of the soil, sometimes they grow quite long and sometimes they're quite short. Either way, at some point, they will probably send a shoot up to the surface. And to our eyes, it looks like we have two, or sometimes way more than that, different plants. But in truth, it's all one plant with an underground horizontal stem connecting them all. So what does that look like? Well, what you're seeing here is a spearmint plant, mentha spicata. It pains me greatly to say this, but I am actually showing you a plant that is native to Europe, Ugh. but naturalized to North America. Now, let's be clear. Naturalized does not necessarily mean that it's good for our pollinators. Naturalized plants often have a carbohydrate to protein to fat ratio in pollen and nectar that is not ideal for our own pollinators. North America itself does have many mints that are native to us here. But again, spearmint, what you're looking at, is not one of them. It is a good and easy example, though, of a rhizome. So here I have pulled up some of this spearmint and I'm showing you that underground rhizome stem. So you can see two plants coming up on either side and connecting them in the middle is this rhizome. So there it is. Take note that a rhizome, again, is not a root, but there are still roots here. The roots are those little spindly, dangly bits coming down off of that rhizome. So you've got these thin little roots, and then above that is that thicker connecting horizontal stem, which is the rhizome, and then the shoots coming upwards from that, which are green. So in these cases, we would many people would say we have two spearmint plants here, but in truth, it's one plant connected by a rhizome. So there you go. That's a rhizome. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you some native flowers that have rhizomes while I share with you some additional rhizome information. So most of the aggressive or vigorous native plants have rhizomes, but the inverse of that is not necessarily true, which is to say not all native plants with rhizomes are aggressive. So as you look at all these native plants with rhizomes here, I will label for you aggressive or tame uh, based on whether it's an aggressive rhizome plant or a tame rhizome plant. So rhizomes are considered vegetative reproduction. In this case, what that basically means is clones. So all of those plants or those shoots, to be more exact, that come up from a rhizome are all the exact same plant, genetically identical, clones. So this is a mode of asexual reproduction. And there are lots of organisms on our delightful planet that reproduce asexually. So like in the ocean, that's a good example, many organisms won't find or are unlikely to find another member of their own species for their entire lifetime. So being able to reproduce asexually allows an individual to pass on their genetic information to the next generation, even in the absence of a partner. Bacteria reproduce asexually and then, of course, we have many plants that use rhizomes, which is a form of asexual reproduction. There's some nuance there, but let's keep it generalized. So for our native plants, this asexual reproduction through rhizomes allows a plant to quickly, and without the need for pollination, spread. Take the resources in an area, crowd out the competition, making clones like this, mm-hmm. It is a great strategy for survival. There's a downside though, of course, because nothing good can ever just be good. <laughs> we always need a downside. 
Using rhizomes, this vegetative asexual reproduction, to spread through an area also means that if a disease comes in that an individual is susceptible to, the entire population is doomed. All of these clones that look to us like separate plants are all actually one plant. And because they're all genetically identical, they are done for. No genetic variation means you haven't got a chance if something comes along that you're vulnerable to. So this can be a disease, but it can also be a weird weather condition or something else that might happen. Genetic variation in a population, which you get in plants through pollination and making seeds, this intermingling of genetic information with a partner, means that any disease or bad weather condition that comes through may well kill many individuals in an area, but there can be some that survive because they're a little different genetically. So rhizomes and asexual reproduction. Good strategy. Top notch. Get all the resources in a spot. Take it over. This is mine. Or like those uh, seagulls in the movie Finding Nemo. Mine? 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 But if something bad happens, now you're in trouble, which actually is why many aggressive plants with rhizomes do also make flowers, pollen, and sexually reproduce, make seeds, and spread those seeds. That way you've got some genetic variation around too. All right, so now you've seen a rhizome. Now you know what it is, why it's a nifty thing to have, and you've seen a bunch of native plants that have rhizomes. And like I said before, aggressive plants usually have rhizomes, although not all plants with rhizomes are aggressive. Some have rhizomes that are quite short, and some have rhizomes that grow really slow. Uh, In an upcoming video, which I will provide a link in the video description when it's available, we will look at native plants that have rhizomes and are aggressive in our gardens at home. Is it possible to use aggressive native plants without your yard or plot becoming overtaken? The answer is yes. So rhizomes or not, plant native which does not include spearmint.